the Premier's League and our discussion on the Ontario government's use of the notwithstanding clause. Former BC Premier Christy Clark, Brad Wall, the former Premier of Saskatchewan, and former Quebec Premier Jean Charest all join us. Thanks so much again. Ms. Clark, I'm going to pick up on where we left off before the commercial. You were saying that Doug Ford is making a point um, sort of about the effectiveness or the how effective elected leaders should be versus others. Um, I'm just wondering, though, you know, are, are you pointing to the judiciary in, in what you're saying? Well, no, I mean, I just, you know, I do know that things can drag through the courts for a long time, but I also know, and that's, it's, I mean, the courts are vitally important as a, as a, uh, a pillar of our democratic process, just like the media is and parliaments are. There's no question about that. But the Section 33 was put in the Constitution as a way to ensure that the ultimate voice is one that setting public policy in this country is one that is accountable to voters every four years. And the courts are not that body. So um, I would say, you know, in recent years in particular, we've seen uh, the courts be more adventurous in terms of go moving into areas of public policy, which I think are more properly the areas for politicians, the things that people run on, get elected on, lose elections on. Although and I'll so say that I'm Mr. Ford did not campaign on this. Well, no, but you know, I, I think most of the people that support Doug Ford probably also support smaller government and I mean I'm not going to make a political judgment I don't know what he's seeing you know what he sees politically out there but I do know and I do expect now that the that section 33 has been invoked in Ontario you may see more of it from provinces as courts continue to move into areas of public policy where I don't think they should probably properly be making laws um, I think you're going to see perhaps more legislatures move in and decide they want to as the accountable bodies exercise their role as the highest courts in the land. In this instance, Mr. Wall, the, the court or the judge in this case didn't say that, that the province couldn't do this. His ruling was based on the timing of it, essentially ruling on the idea that, or, or, or presenting the idea that they tried to change the rules in the middle of the game. It, but de facto, uh, the judge stopped, tried to stop the government from doing it, uh, had it, had it not been for the clause. Well, I, you know, I, I think uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a point of fact that his ruling stopped would have stopped the government's legislation from moving forward or being enacted and you know i didn't in, in may of 2016 in the spring of 2016 i also didn't campaign even though the court case that resulted in us using the, the notwithstanding clause to protect school choice i didn't campaign in, uh, on the fact that we might use it a year later we did uh, and so that's the nature uh, of these uh, of these issues uh, of these decision points it's typically a uh, the ruling will happen from the judge and it may be uh, nothing, uh, the issue at hand may be nothing that was contemplated in an election platform or in an election period, but the premier and the government of the day and in, in the respective province are confronted with the decision and then have the option uh, to use the clause. Did it weigh on you, I mean, the, the, the sort of, uh, was it a big deal, a big uh, decision for you to make as premier when you decided to, to use it? No, what was a big deal for our government was ensuring there was uh, school choice for Saskatchewan families and for students. Uh, that was the big deal. I slept very well that the night we made the decision and the announcement. <laughs> Mr. Sherry, what do you think about the uh, sort of debate going on about are our judges going too far? Are they wading into territory that they shouldn't? Or is some of what's going on right now an attack on the judiciary? I, I don't see it as an attack on the judiciary. By the way, I'm sure that both Christy, Brad, and I, when we saw this thing unfold, because of our experience as premiers, were all thought immediately. If there's one thing that's clear when you're the premier of a province and you're, you had a provincial government, it is the provincial governments who have full control over the way municipalities are organized. And some people may not like that, but that's the way it is. So I was surprised by the ruling, uh, frankly. Uh, because the legal foundation for acting on behalf of the government of Ontario, in my mind, was, was very, very clear. Now, after that, it becomes very much a question of political opportunity and, uh, and whether or not uh, you want to use the notwithstanding clause in those instances. Do judges go too far? I don't think they do uh, in, in general. But, you know, when it was thought up in 1981, there was probably a reason for that. Christie alluded to it very early on. Uh, we elect people. The parliaments are ultimately uh, sovereign, and, and that's the highest court in the land is still our parliaments, whether it be provincial or the federal uh, parliament, and the notwithstanding clause is a tribute to that. 
Ms. Clark, there's some speculation or at least questions going towards the Prime Minister right now. Are you going to get involved? Are you going to wade in? What do you what do you think of those questions and, and what should the federal government be saying? From your well, I, from my perspective, I don't think the federal government has a role to play in this at all. It's a it's exclusively provincial jurisdiction, as Joan pointed out just a moment ago. And um, I would if I was the Prime Minister of Canada, I wouldn't go near this with a ten foot pole. <laughs> But I would also say, though, it will raise the question for the Prime Minister, um, further to what Premier Notley has been saying, will he be prepared to use some legislative hammers that are at his disposal to make sure that Trans Mountain goes ahead? That recent court decision on Trans Mountain had a lot of people confused, and it slowed down the process significantly. Prime Minister, I think, will now be pressed quite properly on whether or not he's going to um, use some version, some legislation as, as heavy-handed as Section 33 might be, or even Section 33 itself, to make sure that we can get a project as nationally significant as Trans Mountain is off the you know, drawing board and shovels in the ground. Mr. Wall, what do you think about the, the questions towards the federal government about weighing in? Well, I agree with, uh, with Christy. I agree that she'd make a, a good, very good, a great Prime Minister of Canada. And I also <laughs> agree uh, that, uh, that if she were in that role, that she would stay out of it, as this Prime Minister should do. <laughs> this, uh, jurisdictionally, this is none of his business. Uh, the, the Trans Mountain is very much, obviously, the federal government's business, not just because, you know, they had to go full Venezuela and buy the pipeline, but these are federal approvals uh, for the pipeline that are at risk in that question. So I think in this particular issue, the, uh, Premier Ford uh, has the jurisdiction, uh, and as Jean has pointed out, also has, uh, has very much has the authority. He's got history behind him in terms of uh, the provinces uh, uh, being able to weigh in, being able to provide direction in terms of the organization of municipalities. Mr. Charre, final word to you. Well, Mr. Trudeau should stay away from it. Both Brad and Christy really nailed it. I mean, this has nothing to do with the federal government. There was this uh, argument that they should invoke the disallowance clause, which is an old clause used for the last time in the 1940s. That would probably be illegal. So no question there, he should stay uh, away from it. And Mr. Trudeau has other things on his plate, uh, as pointed out by Brad and Christy. He doesn't need to get involved in this issue. He has plenty of other things to worry about. Okay, I'm going to leave it. People have yep. said that this is a constitutional crisis. It isn't. Uh, if he were to uh, use that measure that John's just alluded to, that would, uh, I think, uh, cause a constitutional crisis. To be fair, he's, he's pretty much tried to say, I won't be doing that. So, <laughs> But thank you very much to all three of you. Thanks to our Premier's League, former BC Premier Christy Clark, Brad Wall, former Premier of Saskatchewan, and former Quebec Premier Jean Charest. Appreciate all your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.